Muslim Arabs sold a lot of East Africans as slaves to the Middle East and other places through the Sahara Desert and the Indian Ocean over the course of several hundred years. Experts say it's time to talk about this in a more open way. Today, the island of Zanzibar is known as one of the best places to visit in East Africa. Its white sand beaches, clear waters, and hotels give guests from all over the world a vacation they will never forget. The dark past that hung over this sunny paradise 200 years ago has been gone for a long time. The island, which is now a semi-independent part of Tanzania, was thought to be the center of the East African slave trade at the time. In the colorful markets, you could buy things like ivory and clothes, which were very expensive. But there was one thing that stood out more than anything else. Hundreds of slaves. From Eastern Europe to North Africa, Africans have been sold as slaves since ancient times. In the 7th century, when Islam was getting stronger in North Africa, it became famous. This was 700 years before Europeans went to Africa and 10 hundred years before West Africans were sold to America. Back then, Arab Muslims in North and East Africa sold Africans they had kidnapped to the Middle East. There, they worked in the fields, as teachers, or as harem guards. Because of this, it was usual for male slaves to be castrated. Islamic law, on the other hand, said that Muslims, including African Muslims, could not be made slaves. In an interview with DW, Senegalese author Tidiani and Dieye said, At first, Arab Muslims in Eastern and Central Europe took white slaves to sell them to Arabia. But the growing military power of Europe stopped Islamic expansion, and when there weren't enough slaves to go around, Arab Muslims turned their attention to black Africa in a big way. Roots of Slavery in Africa Ndiaye says that slavery has been around in almost all societies. Before people moved there, this was also true in Africa. In Central East Africa, different ethnic groups like the Yao, Makua, and Marava were at war with each other, and whole groups of people on the continent traded with people they had taken in wars. Arab Muslims ran into structures that were already there, which made it easier for them to buy slaves for their own needs. Professor Emeritus of Swahili and African Linguistics at the University of Uppsala in Sweden, Abdulazizi Lodi, says that slavery was a part of many African cultures. When it came to trade, the people who were most important were the tribal Africans themselves. There were no jails in many African countries, so people who were caught were sold. Zanzibar as East Africa's slave hub. In East Africa, the slave trade really took off in the 1600s. Every year, more and more traders from Oman moved to Zanzibar. Because there was a lot of trade on the Swahili coast, the island became even more important in foreign trade, including the slave trade. This is how East Africa's biggest slave market got started. Estimates, some of which are very different from one another, are the only way to know how many Africans were sold from East to North Africa. A big reason for this is that many of the slaves died. Researchers have found that about three out of every four slaves died before they could be sold at the market. People died because they were hungry, sick, or tired from long trips. Author Ndiaye says that 17 million East Africans were sold into slavery. Most people still think of the so-called transatlantic slave trade, which was when Europeans brought slaves to the New World. But Arab Muslim slavery was actually much worse, Ndiaye said. The Trans-Saharan Road was used to bring 8 million Africans from East Africa to Morocco or Egypt. 9 million more people were sent to places near the Red Sea or the Indian Ocean. The Spice of Slavery Lodi, a historian, doesn't agree with Ndiaye's number. 17 million? How is that possible when there may have been less than 40 million people living in Africa at the time? There were no such numbers back then. Old reports were also always questionable. For example, the Scottish preacher and explorer David Livingston thought that 50,000 slaves were sold every year in the markets of Zanzibar. There aren't even close to 50,000 people living in Zanzibar now. Lodi said, the numbers have neither hand nor foot. Egypt and Saudi Arabia did not take all slaves. Omani people moved to Zanzibar in 1820 and began growing cloves to meet the rising demand on the world market. Large estates grew quickly, and slaves were cheap to buy at the nearby slave market.
American historian Frederick Cooper says that from 1839 to 1860, the amount of cloves shipped went from 565, 1,246 pounds, to 12,600 kilograms. Zanzibar went from being known as the center of the slave trade to being known as the center of having slaves. This made it famous for people like the legendary slave trader Tipu Tip. The end of slavery? In what is now Haiti and the Dominican Republic, slaves rose up at the end of August 1791. The end of the transatlantic slave trade, slavery, and colonialism in Africa was greatly helped by these two movements. But it wasn't until 1873 that Sultan Sayyid Bargash of Zanzibar, under pressure from Great Britain, signed a deal that made it illegal to trade slaves in his territory. Even that order was not carried out well. East Africa did not finally get rid of slavery until 1909. Author Ndiaye says that slavery still happens, but in a different way. It is thought that about 40 million people still live in slavery around the world. There are a lot of people in Africa. Mauritania says it has done away with slavery, but in fact, not much has changed in North Africa. Young people are made to work against their will and are sexually abused. Lodi says that there have been accounts of slave markets in Libya and that a case of slavery was found in Tanzania a few years ago. In a faraway place, 50 to 60 boys were made to work in a mine. They weren't paid, and they lived in a camp with armed men watching over them. NDAA says that the economic effects of the West's rule over Africa are worse than the effects of slavery in East Africa. The West still controls the economies of many of these countries. This is something that many smart people talk about. But NDAA says it's also important to talk about what happened in East Africa over the years. Most African authors haven't written a book about the Arab Muslim slave trade yet because they want to stay true to their faith. There are 500 million Muslims in Africa, and it's better to blame the West than to talk about what Arab Muslims did in the past. We hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about civilization or time period we should talk about. Also watch another video here.